Hello and welcome. Please pause this video, read the problem, and try it on your own. Okay, so in this problem, they're asking for the correlation coefficient. So we'll get towards that in a moment. Let's just read the context of the problem. They tell us that a nutritionist has collected information about different brands of beef hot dogs. We have the beef hot dogs here, and then we have the calories per beef hot dog and the milligrams of sodium in the beef hot dogs. Right, so you might look at the data first to get a sense of it. It's out of order, but I do notice a trend that, for example, 149, if it's 149 calories, we have 322 milligrams of sodium. But then jump up to like 190 over here and also notice that the milligrams of sodium go up. And you can find that pretty much throughout as the calories increase, so do the milligrams of sodium. So we're looking at the correlation coefficient for the line of best fit. In other words, if we plotted these points, we had some kind of a graph here of, let's say, calories on the x-axis, right? And then sodium on the y-axis, we get like a scattering of points. Line of best fit is the line that uh, reduces the distance to the most points possible, or best represents your trend. And the correlation coefficient measures how good of a fit that line is. So for example, here, notice these points are pretty close to the line. That's a pretty good fit. And the highest correlation coefficient you can have is one, or negative one if you have a negative slope. Uh, anything close to zero is a really low correlation coefficient, which would mean that your line is not a really good fit. For example, if you spread these points out here, if I drew the same line, it might be the best line I can draw to represent these points, but you would get a very low correlation coefficient because the points are so far away from the line. In other words, the line does not really represent the data. Also, you might find a really low correlation coefficient if you're trying to use a line to represent nonlinear data, like these blue points right here, which are clearly represented by some kind of parabola. If you try to draw a line and represent them, the correlation coefficient will be really low towards zero because it'll show you that your line is not a good fit. Now, how do you find this? Well, it's a long and involved process. However, we can quickly find it on the graphing calculator. So, what do we do? Well, in the graphing calculator, if we press stat, we can enter data like this, like this table, into a list. And to do that, we want to edit our list. So we hit one here. Now I've already entered my data right here. If let's say you have a list you want to clear, I'm going to use list one and list two. You can scroll left and right to choose different lists. Let's say like list three. Let's say for some reason you want to use list three, but there's data there. Scroll up to the list heading right here. Hit clear and then enter and that will clear your list. So if you have a bunch of data in there, just scroll to the top, hit clear, and then enter. Once you have all your data in, you're ready to proceed. So take a moment and enter your data. You might want to pause the video and do that. Once you have all of your data in, there's only one step left. If we press stat again, there's lots of things we can do here. But if we go to calc, right, calculations on your data, look at choice four, it says linear regression, ax plus b. In this form, b is the intercept and a is the slope. But linear regression means your line of best fit. So we hit choice four. And we want to find the line of best fit for the two lists we entered. We're list one, so I hit second one for list one, comma, second list two. And I put list one first because that's my x. So we just put x first and then our y. Hit enter. And this gives us everything we need to know. A is our slope. B is our intercept. And not r squared, but r is our correlation coefficient. They want us the nearest hundredth. since four is in the hundredth place, we round to the second digit. Two is in the thousandth place. We use that number to round the hundredths. If this number in the thousandth place, if this two is a five, we would round four up to five. So five and above, you round up. Below five, you keep things where they are. So here, our correlation coefficient is 0.94. So r, oops, r is 0 0.94. And what you would say to explain this a high correlation coefficient is very close to one. You say this is a good fit for your data, meaning as we increase the number of calories, you want to say this part, we also increase the amount of sodium. Or if it was something different, as you decrease the amount of calories, you decrease the amount of sodium. There's some kind of linear trend, and you want to name that here. Now let's say your calculator is not giving you this R value. It should be set to do that, but if it's not, here's what you do. Press second, catalog, and bear with me here you have to turn on the feature that calculates the coefficient sometimes, the correlation coefficient. It's under D. We can scroll down or hit alpha, 
to access our letters and then look for the letter D here. I see it right here, D. After you hit alpha D, you might have to do that twice to scroll down to the D section here. There's all these commands that start with D. We need the command diagnostic on. So my arrow is next to that. If I press enter, diagnostic on, hit enter again, done. Now it will find the correlation coefficient. All right, hope this helped.